Calculus is all about rates of change, and we're going to do that today by looking at equations of tangent line. But how do we find the equation of a line when algebra won't be enough? That's what we're going to cover today, so let's get started. This is our Calculus Lab 2.1.1, Rates of Change and Tangents. If you haven't looked at our Intro to Mathematica lab yet, I advise you do that first. It'll make a lot of this make more sense. We're also going to be using the outside-inside writing style that helps us keep up with our parentheses and commas and so on. I'll explain that as we go. And we're using System and Sarvis Early Transcendentals and Calculus. I have a link to that text in the description here. That's our reference for this particular lab. All right, now what we want to do is we want to graph a function, f of x, along with five secant lines. Now, a secant line is a line that crosses the graph in two places. And uh, we want these two points to get closer and closer and closer so that we can find an equation of a tangent line. That's how we get around the algebra problem. And what I mean by that is recall from algebra, so I'm going to hit a note, I'm going to put a note into my document. I use Alt 7 to insert text. So recall from algebra, the equation of a line is y equals m times x minus some x coordinate, I'll call it a, plus a y coordinate in functional notation of the f of a. So we need two pieces of information, a point and a slope. However, with the tangent line, we only have one piece of information, that's a point. So we're going to use the secant lines to hopefully create a trend of slopes that will give us an estimate for the slope of our tangent line. That's the strategy here. And to do that, we're going to let our h values get closer. The h values represent the distance between two points. So I have a list here of my h values, 1, 0 0.5, so on. Those points are getting closer and closer. That's why the h values are getting smaller. Now for our first example, our first graph is we have f of x is this parabola. So I'll go ahead and define it. Remember when you're defining a function in Mathematica, you need to have an underscore in your initial value that communicates to Mathematica what our variable is going to be in our function. I have x squared minus 3x minus 4. So first, let's just plot this function, f of x. I'm going to let x go from 1.5 to 3. And I want a plot style. I would like for this to be a thick line. And so there we have it. There we have the initial curve. I'm going to name this plot A so that I can use it later on. I can just reference A and it'll generate this plot. Now we need to start thinking about our secant lines. Okay, so first of all, we need a slope. So I'm going to define a secant slope function that has two inputs, uh, an A value and an H value. And this is just simply going to be the difference quotient. So remember the slope formula is a change in Y over the change in X. Here, what that looks like is a change in y, so that's f of a plus h minus f of a. Remember my two x coordinates I'm picking here are a and a plus h, so these are the two y coordinates, divided by the two x coordinates subtracted from each other, which is a plus h minus a. Now, if we're clever enough to notice, a minus a is zero. So in other words, the denominator is just h. And there's my secant slope. Function. So if I type in a value of a and h, I get a slope. Now from that, we can create a secant line. And let's let this one have three inputs, a, h, and x. And what I'm going to do here for secant line is just reference my equation from algebra, slope times x minus a plus f of a. Okay, so now those two functions give me secant slope and then the equation of the secant line, which is very useful. Okay, now to plot my secant lines, I could do something like this. Let's go up to A real quick. Let's take off the A. To graph two functions together, you can make a list. And I could say secant line at the point, let's pick one. Let's see, we want, we want our A value to be two. We, let's pick an H value of one, just to test it, and then our variable x. And uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like for the first graph to be thick and the second one to be red and dashed. So the right way I do that is I make a list of my plot styles. The, the thick reference is the first one. Directive means I'm going to add more than one detail here. I want this to be red and dashed. So there we have it. We have the red dashed line is our first secant line, and uh, you can see the curve um, going like that. All right, now what I want to do is graph all of them. 
So first I'm going to have a plot function. And this is what I mean by outside inside writing style. Notice that I open and close plot at one time. And now I'm going to go inside and put what I want to plot inside. We're so used to writing left to right uh, that we want to do that here. But if you notice like in this example, I have a bunch of parentheses and braces and brackets at the end. If you just try to write left to right, it's very confusing on what we've left out when we have an error. So this eliminates error. So here I'm going to have a plot. Inside the plot, I'm going to have a table. And don't worry about the table yet. We want our x value in our plot to go from 1.5 to 3. And I want my plot style to be um, directive, red, and dashed like that. Okay, so now this would work as long as my table's filled out. So now table, I'm doing outside inside writing as well. I'm going to go in my table and decide what I want to plot. I want to plot all the secant lines uh, that we have um, with a value of 2, h value of, I don't know yet, we'll figure that out, and then the x value. All right, now the way I can go toggle through the h values in my list, the 1, the 0 0.5, etc., is I can reference so h is a list, I can reference an item in that list by its index. Meaning, if I say, if I say h double brackets 1, that will give me the first item in my list. So what I want is the ith item in my list. i going from 1 to how many things we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. i going from 1 to 5. And this will give me all of my uh, secant lines at the same time like that. Okay, now let's label this guy B. And what I really inter am interested in is seeing this along with my initial plot. So I can say show A, B, and I'll put them together. There we have it. And so you can kind of see, um, it gets kind of crowded, but here's the first H value here, the second one, the third one. And one of these in here is hitting, is almost exactly the tangent line. And that's the one we're interested in. Now to figure out the slope of the tangent line, I'm going to look at a table of the slopes of these secant lines. We already have everything we need for it. We just need to do a table here. And I'm going to reference the ith value of h in the list. And along with that, the secant slope uh, 2hii, or h double brackets i, sorry. And then I want i going from 1 to 5. And I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to wrap this in a table form function that will make my table look nice for us. Okay, so now what I'm looking at here is this column is h values, the h values in my list, and this is the secant slopes. So as you can see, as h gets closer and closer to zero, the secant slopes like they're getting closer and closer to the value one. So if I had a guess, appears that the tangent line has slope m equals 1. I can let Mathematica figure that out for me. If I simplify 1, which is the slope we guess, times x minus 2 plus f of 2, I get negative 8 plus x, so alt 7. We believe the tangent line has equation y equals x minus 8. And we could even plot if we wanted to. Let's copy this guy here. And instead of doing the secant line at 2 with an h value of 1, let's just plot x minus 8 and see how that looks. That looks like a pretty good tangent line. Looks like it's hitting the curve exactly that one point. That's exactly what we want to do. Now remember, the tangent line is representing the instantaneous rate of change of the graph at this point. Algebra is not enough. We need to introduce this idea of a limit, which we're building here with these tables to get us the exact tangent line. We're going to do the exact same thing now, but this time we have a different graph. We have x times x plus 2, x minus 5, and we're looking at the point at a being negative 1. The process is just the same. We've done most of it already. Um, we just need to redefine our value of f of x. Okay, so now we just need to plot our function and plot the secant line. So uh, let's let the value c be our plot of f of x. And let's let x go from negative uh, 1.3 to 0 0.5. That's a little bit of trial and error. You might have to do that yourself. Um, plot style here. Let's just do thick again. 
I can put a semicolon at the end of my code here to kind of hide that because we don't want to see it yet. Okay, so now we're just going to make a table of our secant lines. So let's do plot. And within that plot, we want a table. And let's go ahead and say that our plot is going to go from negative 1.3 to 0 0.5 with a plot style of a directive, red, and dashed. Now we just need to figure out our table. Our table is going to be a table of secant lines. We already have a function for that. And we want our secant lines to have an a value of negative 1, uh, h, and x. And remember the h values, to reference that, we say double brackets i. And we want our i value to go from um, 1 to 5. All right, I'm going to suppress that output as well. We don't want to see it yet. We want to do a show C and D so we can see them together. And there we have it. So you can see these different secant lines. It looks like one going across there, then there. And then one of these up here hits right at the line. Okay, so now uh, what is that equation or what is the slope there? We're going to do another table. This time we want to see our H values and our secant slope values. So you can slope with an a value of negative 1, cycling through our h values. And remember that h value is going from i 1 to 5. And I also want to table form around this. Okay, there we have it. So when h is 1, we have a slope of negative 6. But as we get closer to 0 in the h direction, it looks like my slope is getting closer to negative 1. Okay, so we're going to make a note. We guess the tangent line at slope m equals negative 1. I can let Mathematica handle the algebra for me by saying uh, negative 1 times x minus negative 1, which is x plus 1, plus f of negative 1. We get negative x plus 5, or 5 minus x, so alt 7. We hypothesize. The tangent line has equation y equals negative x plus 5. So we can plot those together if we want to. Let's see. Take our C graph. Take out the C. We want to make a, we want two functions. So I'm going to make a list of functions. The second one being negative x plus 5. And so I want two plot styles here, thick. Red and dashed. Oh, and we suppressed our output. Did not want that. So there we have it. That looks like a pretty good tangent line. So we are finding the instantaneous rates of change with these curves, even though algebra alone is not enough. I hope these are making sense. Let's look at one more. This time, we want to graph g of x along with this d of x function, and we want to explain how they're related. Okay, so first I'm going to define uh, these two functions, g of x and d of x. And if you notice, d of x looks kind of like a difference quotient. Okay, if you notice, I get an error statement. And the reason I got this error statement is because I already used the value d earlier on to define to label a plot. And Mathematica gets it stuck in its memory. The d should be that plot. So that's not a big deal. Let's call it j. Okay, now if I plot these two things together, it looks like this. Now the blue line is my g of x. The j of x is my... Uh, line here, the, the yellow line. Um, how are they related? That's what we're asking. Explain how the function of d of x, the value, the function values of d of x are reflected on the graph of g of x. Okay. Notice here that the yellow line crosses the x-axis about right here between 1 and 2. And that same point, what's happening to the blue line, it kind of bottoms out. And in fact, when the yellow line is negative, that means my rate of change is negative or the blue line, the blue curve, and the blue curve is going down at that point because it has a negative rate of change. When the yellow line is positive, meaning it's above the x-axis, the blue line is going up because it has a positive rate of change. And that's what we need to summarize here. So 
we'll leave a comment that says when j of x is negative, g of x is going down. When j of x is positive, g of x is going up. What about when j of x equals zero? J, g of x is flat. In other words, if we hit a low point at that point. Okay, so I hope these exercises make sense. We are finding the instantaneous rates of change looking at secant lines. As we get further into calculus, this will help us get to some things that will let us find these rates of change really fast, but we're not there yet. If you have questions on this material, the Mathematica or the Mathematics, let me know. I'll be happy to help. This is great stuff to learn. It's very useful. And we'll see you next time. Take care.